I didn't know you did a spot on Louis Armstrong. <laughs> you fucking nailed that. Couple pufferonis and then I know. We'll be fine once we get it's going. It's so much work to just talk into a microphone. <laughs> You're asking so much of me. I was just telling someone the other day. I was like, man, shout out to fucking, like, we were just doing prep work. I was like, shout out to fucking Steven, man. He does all the fucking work on the podcast. <laughs> I thought you I thought you were about to say. <laughs> shout out to Rush Limbaugh. That motherfucker. He sure knew how to talk. <laughs> Say what you will, but he had the work ethic. That motherfucker, he'd show up every day and talk into a microphone. <laughs> Shouts out to Rush, baby. <laughs> oh, fucking rest in power, dude. <laughs> he's he's finally sober. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> he's dead. Oh, is he? Wait, is he actually dead? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he was alive. No. When he died, all these memes were up, and it would be like, how many days dead it he was? It'd be like, congrats, Rush, you're f- three days sober. <laughs> <laughs> they were relentless. <laughs> oh, that's fucking good. Uh, this is all going in the episode. Why, why, why do we need an intro? Uh, welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steven. And today we're slowly dying and talking into microphones. Oh, God. <laughs> But we honestly, I I typed that out because I was tired of the slowly dying part, and I realized after I shut off my AC, like we are. I I don't know about you over there, but I'm definitely about to slowly die as it just gets hotter and hotter in this room. You look like you're melting, like the Wicked Witch of the world. <laughs> I'm over See? here shirtless by the end of the podcast, <laughs> just like like stripped down to my underwear, like just talking shit like a madman. <laughs> Yeah, I cranked the a- the AC up like super high. Had it running for like seven hours straight, just <laughs> just for this, just so you can Shit. lose all of that energy efficiency and have to start over from scratch. Right out the window, right before we start recording, I open the window so I can get it all out. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> you don't want any uh, any background noise. You got to get all that AC out of here. Right out. The um, I'm actually we didn't record earlier this week, and I'm so glad we didn't because that day um, on Wednesday, I don't know what it was down there, but it was uh, 98 and climbing around the time that we were talking about recording, and it was like no, yeah, that's I'm not I don't want to turn off my AC for that. Too much without it. Yeah. Well, how, how's the rest of the week been? Uh, good. Actually, on that same day, I was supposed to go out in the uh, the food truck, but my boss canceled it because he didn't want me to have to. Uh, cook inside of an easy bake oven out mm. in the parking lot where we don't really even make that much money. <laughs> so he canceled it and I did prep work instead, which was fantastic. Yeah, hell yeah. It was like the, the heat difference inside of the truck, like it could be upwards of like 20, 20 degrees. Like we have fans, but because everything else is electric, we can't run the AC. Yeah, he's like, hey, you know, no, it's hot, but we need you to open an oven. Turn it on, crawl right in. Yeah, that. get inside. Yeah, close it behind you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, make sure you close the door behind you. <laughs> keep keep uh, keep the efficiency going there. It's that's that's rough, man. Yeah. Despite that's- that, though, I I have um, gotten heat rash over the past week, which Ooh, is great. You get splotchy. Do you get the splotches? No, mostly like pimples and bumps and shit, like all over my yeah. neck and my like armpit line. Does aloe help you? Um, I haven't tried that yet. I, I think it helps with anything he related. I, w- I would like bathe in that all summer when doing pools. Oh, man. I, don't- I miss being in Florida because we just have like a bunch of aloe plants outside. That's like a, a hack in Florida. Like you don't yeah. you don't own a home in Florida without having a, an aloe plant outside. Yeah. Man, that's so cool. Also, I have uh, – I've been sticking up – you know, I've been doing all my dishes. We talk- I think we talked about that last week of like – Yes, I had uh, one of my my old partners in crime. Right, we'd be uh, in the grow house trapping, <laughs> and he had a theory. His dishes were always clean because he knew if your dishes cross the threshold of the top of the sink, it's a definitive symptom of mental illness. <laughs> 
He felt so strongly about that. <laughs> so his dishes, they would be a quarter of an inch below the threshold, and he'd go to people's houses and he'd check their dish level. That's fucking like, hilarious. <laughs> he'd live by it. It was so funny. But there's something to it. Yeah, I definitely, I think about it every time I have a dirty dish and I don't feel like washing it. Um, but I've been staying on top of it, and yet I still have um, fruit flies. That's my, I hate them. Like, they're, they suck so fucking bad. And once you have them, it's like you can – you really have to like go through everything, make sure. And like, I thought I had gotten everything, and I had a um, uh, a can that honestly I I rinsed out. I just must have not gotten it well enough, and they were hanging out by that today. And I moved it, and then a bunch of them, you know, <laughs> it's like fuck. My cat Dude, loves we, them though. Yeah, we got the ants right now. Ooh. They're fucking marching through like a <laughs> one by one. Oh, my God. They look like they're on a mission to murder lesser ants. <laughs> they're marching in angry. I love watching those um, the documentaries where they talk about, like, ant behavior and, like, how different, different you know, species of ants they have. I guess they're they different species. I think they're different species. Anyways, the, the different types of ants they have, they, they interact differently with, like, you know, different colonies. But, like, there's usually mm-hmm. there's a lot of fighting going on between them. And they uh, will will absolutely destroy each other if they don't like. If you don't smell like their queen, if you don't smell like one of them, they will fuck your shit up. Yeah, they're so cool because they're like. I feel like I'm going to say this dumb, dumb way. But <laughs> s- the smart scientists say they're uh, like a collected consciousness. Yeah, right? the hive mind. Yeah, it's so cool. Very cool. Man, there was this uh, record label that I I used to buy albums from. And at some point, they changed their name, I think, to Hive Mind. And when you would buy an album from them, they had these stickers that was like a a micro, like close-up shot of a bee colony, Mm -hmm. like a super zoomed-in shot, and it had this weird, you know, Gaussian blur on it. And it said, uh, Hive Mind, we eat the young. (laughs) <laughs> and that's how they sold. I was like, "That's a that's a dope, you know." It's pretty sick. Know. Yeah, imagery. How's your week been? Oh, oh yeah, fuck. Um, just whatever. It's, <laughs> it's 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 been better than better than the last week. I've been I was super fucking depressed. I feel like I'm uh kind of re regulating. I was talking to my doctor. I think there's. I, I think. I think my tolerance just to opiates is so fucking high. My meds aren't always working, but I kind of I kind of figured some stuff out. I feel kind of back on uh back on the norm, but uh good, cool. Yeah. What else? I had uh Oh, I was super depressed last week, feeling better, but I all right. I have a brain virus right now, right? Mm-kay. I've been reaping. I've been reaping. I'm, I'm I'm gathering the materials for the castle, right? Yep, yep. No longer naked in the wilderness, but I'm considering. I, I'm tempted to go back to my old ways a little bit, right? Uh, I wait, don't. How do you mean? In what way? All right, I'm not trying to get high right now. Okay, that that's for later. Okay, <laughs> okay yeah. My 401k is my drug savings account. That's for the future, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but kind of feel like doing a little crime i'm feeling i'm feeling the crime edge okay <laughs> the call of crime dude sober i could do some super crime right <laughs> some mega mind shit <laughs> Just yeah man i i'm i feel the evil genius calling you know it's it's so dumb but there i'm i'm kind of joking but i'm being honest in the sense like i i miss parts of how I, I used to be able to be, and there's uh, specific things that are really tempting right now. But Now, do you think it's more of, like, the adrenaline or the, like, fuck the law mindset? I don't so much get the fuck the law part, but I, I do know – I, I understand what you mean of the part, like, uh, like, uh, like the maverick – aspect mm-hmm. like fuck fuck everyone i'm gonna do it my own way yeah. kind of thing i i get that a little bit 
I, I more I think I really enjoy the 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 psychopathy parts mm-hmm. where where you're like, hey, I'm going to like not be <laughs> like I, mentally I, well. <laughs> n- not that part, but the like, I'm not going to give a fuck about any anyone in mm-hmm. this part of my life right yeah like i had this large section open where i could operate in the gray zone right mm-hmm. i could be I could be a really nice guy in that mode yeah but I, but i also could be the guy who takes everything you own so you bunk shit fuck you over and like not give a fuck right yeah i miss that and it would be nice to dabble in some of that not give a fuck mode, right? Mm-hmm. It's very tempting, especially when you can make a lot of money. You say hitting a lick feels good. Oh my god, all day like suckers just feels, hitting licks it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> especially the, the sell and the bunk shit. <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh, it's so satisfying. It's like you know, it's not like. <laughs> I had one of my buddies, he was on Cops for selling uh, Splenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, did you tell me that, yeah, he still got jail time. That sucks. Yeah. Intent to distribute is intent. No, but uh, yeah, I, I would only, I rarely fleeced people because it, it's bad business. You can't yeah. get repeats, but I don't know. There's, I just miss, I miss playing around with shit, but uh, I've done really nice being out of of the hustle but there's parts of it that every once in a while are just like really fucking tempting so i'm trying to just trying to be smarter not be a dumbass Mm -hmm. and fuck shit up but it's it's hard when shit presents itself you know that's your uh that's your id coming out you gotta yeah check check you gotta get that ego in check or embrace it be a monster. <laughs> this would be an absolute menace to society. I'm trying to Freud it up. What's funny is actually the for the longest time, I mean, I still describe you this way, but when, especially when I knew you in high school, and like you had like all the 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 so many facial piercings and <laughs> tattoos and shit, and um, I th- you had dreads for a while, didn't you? I've had like all kinds of different hair, you know, uh, un- untraditional hairstyles. Dreadhawk. Dread, yeah, exactly. And and I think on first impression, you were definitely what most people look and they think, oh, this is a this is a ruffian. This is a real hooligan <laughs> over here. Um, I bet he goes places on trains without tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, hop and turn styles and uh, sneaking into <laughs> sneaking into baseball games. Uh, he, the, uh, but I always like you know like he he looks he looks wild as hell, but he is like the nicest dude. He's like the sweetest person. So like when you d- describe like doing wild shit like that, and 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 you know like I just think like I just can't. I both can and I can't picture you doing anything like that. Dude, it's like a switch, man. I can like if I if I don't care about someone, I could just like shut everything off. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. I think that's where I get annoyed with shit so easily cuz I'm like only I don't get to have any of that aggressive nature anymore. Like, so like you don't understand how nice I'm being to you right now. Yeah, it's I that's how I feel like with people doing like the smallest rude shit. I'm like, you you don't know me. Like, yeah. fuck you. I, no, and I, I've been going through that a little bit lately. Because you, I know you have a streak of that in you too. Where yeah. it's like, especially you're at work, someone you know says some some off color shit, whatever. Like, it's like you know, you just like smile, nod, whatever. You have to get through your day, but it's like there there's part of you that just wants to to slaughter villages. Yeah. The it, you know in, in in varying degrees like certain things yeah. is like you can just yep okay yep got it here's your shit you can go now I I haven't encountered all the the shitty customers that you know my staff or you know fellow employees have had to deal with wasn't when I was there I've been wanting to go off on somebody for for being a shitty customer for a long time now 
Is it the creeper guy? No, 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 not him in particular. Um, just like so, at my old job where like I was, you know, in charge and I had staff, and I would like one day in particular, I left early and uh, I got a call that like this woman was in here like screaming about some, you know, screaming to the the person at the register and like. You know, oh, I know the owner, and you know this is this is you know this won't stand. This is bullshit. You know, if you know this idiot over here wouldn't, you know, it's like okay, if I was there, I would have kicked this woman's ass. Like I would have, you know, <laughs> like I would have had to escort her out. So, you know, like okay, you have got to go. We are not going to serve you anymore. And sure enough, I so they told me about it, and I recognized the woman's name. She had been in before, and she's a bitch, and she um. Sounds like we should. Uh, you, you got her. You got her name. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't open re- up some. Uh, I don't re- some loan account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't remember it anymore. But yeah, it, it would be uh, probably worth it too. I, she definitely has money. I told my boss about it. I told one of the owners, and um, and she messaged me back, and she was like, "Oh, she's tried to pull shit like that over here in Ferndale, their other location, and like we won't." Like if she tries to come in here and order anymore, just tell her no. Tell her where we can't serve her anymore because nothing we ever do is ever good enough for her. So she needs to find somewhere else to eat. I was like, all right, bet. Nice to have you know the you know your your staffs back like that. But she, uh, I never did see her again. But anyways, my my, I've been having uh, that feeling of disres- a level of disrespect from a coworker, and it's like I can't. I can't work with that. Like it's I I'm being nice. It's like when I first started and you didn't know my background and whatever like little shit that, you know, trips them out. It's it's whatever. You know, we we figured out together. Now that they know that I have excuse me, years and years of experience and I'm not I'm definitely not dumb. I definitely don't do shit because I fucked up. I ev- ain't no teeny bopper. <laughs> yeah. Everything's for a reason. I have you know, methods and and also i do this seven days a week and then they come in there one day a week and they get imagine complaining (laughs) like what we're working one day a week and you complain to the guy that's always there yeah yeah fuck up um just complaining about like the the equipment that's the other one blames the tools and then complains about um the process of shit and it's like dog like so i i would I'm trying to be nice because right now we're short staffed and it's, you know, it's not my call to fire someone. Um, also, we were going into a uh, really brutal shift and I'm just like, hey, right, hey, how about, you know, you work over here because he was bitching about some of the equipment. And it's like, how about you work over here and, you know, deal with these, you know, people instead and I'll, I'll make the stuff over here and um, just outright refused to like make anything. He he refused to make anything else for the rest of the shift. I did all of the orders by myself. <laughs> he rang in orders and like that was it. That was the extent of it. It's like all right, cool. But just yeah, like the snide, bad. shitty stuff. It's like, dude, you can't you can't fucking talk to me like that. No, like you're, I'm, you're going into the blender next, mother. Right. Like I'm being nice to you because I'm professional. That's the thing. Is like I've I talked to my boss about it and like we're. Short staff, I you know, like don't fire him now, but like he definitely doesn't need to be working here with people anymore. That's that's absurd. Here, here's the question: Do you? Because I, I I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, I think uh, like video games is something, but I think I think we need uh, outlets for aggression. I don't. I think a lot of I think a lot of men in our I hate that, fuck that. That was such a weird. I hate saying that. Yeah. Right. That's it's gross. Yeah, it felt gross. <laughs> so gross. But <laughs> like, I, we need violent uh, outlets of some sort. That's what the um, either the walk-in freezer or cooler. You walk in and you scream oh. <laughs> and you punch a box of broccoli, and then you like, go back out <laughs> and everything's something, fine. Uh, something you can put that anger into, right? Mm-hmm. Like a like a punching bag is the, the classic example, but. I don't know. I'm craving something like that because it, it's hard to be like super balanced when you have parts of you that feel that much anger, at least for me. Yeah. Uh, the the way I see it is 
the the way I, I at least I manage it, I guess, is I, I realize like you can't take away my professionalism. I'm not going to be friendly with you anymore, but you can't take away my professionalism. I'm, I'm going to keep being that. I'll mm. stand up for myself, you know, whatever in, in the meantime, but I'm, I, you can't make me forego who I am and, and what I, what I'm capable of. You refuse to sacrifice your, your grace on the behalf of another. Right, right. My, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose my composure for, for you. You know, it's not worth it. You're not worth the time. Marble. Yeah. You, Marble and fire. Damn right. Yeah, I I uh I always respect that. I am not good at that at all, but I try. Now here <laughs> this is kind of funny. So uh my girlfriend Sarah, she <laughs> she told me part of the reason she doesn't like listening to the podcast is because I cuss too much and sound like a mean person. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Sarah's such a sweetheart. <laughs> it's, but, the, all right, so, <laughs> there's something to that. Like, you need people that balance you out. Like, yin-yang, like, with us working on this. You mm-hmm. have to have, like, if you are if you aren't the person that can cool off and chill, like, you have to have that counterbalance. Yeah. In, in friendships, relationships, whatever. I feel like- Work, work partner. I feel like a fair enough reason for her to not listen to the podcast is that she lives with you. Oh yeah, yeah, she's so sick of me. <laughs> I, just, I, I I hear you all the time, all day. I don't think any girlfriend has ever liked their boyfriend's podcast <laughs> in the history of podcasts. Even like, oh, you do a podcast unless unless they're also on the podcast. Mm. And, and even the then, it's questionable. Yeah, questionable. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you want to go through some? Uh, I know we're just freestyling today, but you want to go through some random topics, see where it takes yeah, us. Steven's got some prompts for us. Uh, speaking of old ways, all right, new hybrid drugs. Okay, mm-hmm. I know you're f- you're familiar with the Florida Flocka. Yep. Shit, right? All right, so there's a new one called Two C, and it's actually Two C B, and Two Two B C is a psychedelic compound, a synthetic drug, right? Mm-hmm. It's like one of the trippy drugs that gets sold as acid a lot. Okay, yeah. And and, and this compound is 2CB, and it people think it's the other compound, but it's not, right? But it's being sold in, I think it's Brazil, but it's, it's definitely South America, as a premium level cocaine. But it's neon pink. Wow. And it's it's six times the price of cocaine. And Jesus. it's like w- what the like high level party kids and rich people are starting to use. But it's a psychedelic coke. It is basically a mix of different research chemicals. It has fentanyl in it, a stimulant, uh, molly, and LSD basically. It reminds me of um, PCP a little bit. It has a little bit of those aspects, but it's people basically make whatever different combinations of it. There's no actual formula. Oh, There's yeah, no, of like, course, yeah. And it's just basically a fancy pink Coke that has psychedelic downers in it and – uh it's selling like wildfire, and it's starting to show up in the U.S. Dude, I'm pretty sure at this point I could put my cat's fucking uh, cat litter in, the, in a bag with a little bit of fe- – sprinkle some fentanyl in it and sell it to people. Oh, yeah. So it's just long- fucking silica gel beads and – Yeah. As long as you can uh, access – get the, the fentanyl in your bloodstream. It doesn't matter. Jesus. And then the other one that's really int- – so, you know, we went from – you know, morphine to heroin to fentanyl. The the latest development, right? You know, there's all the different types of fentanyl, car fentanyl. Mm-hmm. Very few people can do any amount of car fentanyl, but there's all kinds of different synthetic fentanyls. Is, is car fentanyl the fentanyl that you drop in the between the seat of your car and you got to kind of fish it out and <laughs> it kind of spills a little bit and you got to kind of like scoop it up with your with your index finger and like. <laughs> Gonna you know snort it up off of there. Or? It's instantly dead. Yeah. <laughs> Reg- regular fentanyl is it's at least 
200 times stronger than morphine, and carfentanil, it's something like 1,000 times stronger Jesus than Christ. So, literally, a grain of salt will kill. What's like, So, what is that made for? Yeah, uh, elephant tranquilizers. Jesus Christ. Like, that's what fentanyl was developed for. My understanding, it's for animal shit. Like, there's... Fentanyl was never made for people. So there's the different car fentanyls and fentanyls that are super strong, right? Mm -hmm. But now we're at the point where people have, like, when they test sewer systems, the fish have opiates in their bloodstream now. Hell yeah. Like, in Florida, like, they're, the opiates and meth are in that higher percentage of the population at high dosages. So we have people that have a higher drug tolerance than ever before, right? They've been doing fentanyl for five, 10 years now, right? Mm -hmm. So now in Europe, there's new mixes and it's coming. And, you know, there was stuff in the US when I was using called cheese and it was a, a heroin, benzo and some other shit. And that's been around forever. You'd get batches of like blue heroin, purple heroin and shit like that. But now there's people specifically making a fentanyl, tranquilizer and benzo mix which is like the you know as dangerous of a combination as you could make benzos and opiates always dangerous mixing that with a tranquilizer and all those drugs potentiate each other and make them much, like compounds the danger so now that people are selling mixes of it all together and it's some of the most potent drugs per milligram that you know people have ever seen and it's like starting to get pretty popular now too so it it's gonna get really interesting and then it's like uh if it gets so strong that people die it kind of restarts the market in a way because it gets harder and harder for new addicts to start mm -hmm. it's, it's a it, it's an interesting problem but there's gonna be uh some new cool stuff soon <laughs> <laughs> saving up that 401k baby right. can i tell you i've always been fascinated by and i i've never number one never been offered the chance to nor would i pro have done it but i've always been fascinated by the idea of pcp oh dude you're a pcp man if i've ever seen <laughs> i've i've known this about you forever you're you're sherm through and through yep <laughs> just trying to get wet man those drippy cigarettes no you would love it oh you you and it it goes back to the Fago roots with ICP. <laughs> I, I know where this all comes from. <laughs> well, actually, I really didn't think about PCP that much until um, I guess I did a little bit. Uh, there was a couple ICP songs, but that um, you ever listen to uh, Leak Brothers? You've shown me. That. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been a long time though. That uh, they had a whole album. Yeah, right? whole whole album called Waterworld. Yeah, that's what it was. That's oh my, fucking that obnoxious! Was cool. The, the obnoxious. goofy shit they the, the entire album just about like breaking into morgues and stealing the the embalming <laughs> fluid. And, like, <laughs> man, I remember messaging one of my buddies way this is a while ago, but I think it was on Facebook, and I was messaging him, and it was like, oh fuck. I spilled PCP all over my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> and he was the one motherfucker. I'm like, this dude just lost a lot of money knocking over his PCP mm. all over his keyboard. <laughs> it's it, it's the it's very similar to crack in the sense that no one understands what it's like. It's not like there was that whole fear campaign. Like it's going to make you you eat people on a football field. Right, right, right. Like, right. Yeah, you you dig it. <laughs> <laughs> the um the one I, I used to say all the time is like if i make it to 90 i'm doing pcp with you know oh. and the idea being like by the time i'm i'm a, I'm an old fucking decrepit <laughs> man doing pcp <laughs> <laughs> just smoking sherm yeah. in the, and embalming just fluid. dipping a dipping a new port hundred it's funny there's a there's a couple rappers that I know where that's still like the only thing they fuck with. Like a lot of the people that fuck with PCP don't even smoke weed. Like it's just like a ghetto thing they picked up along the way that every once in a while they have a wet cigarette. A fucking you know what I mean? Shermanator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next one. Yeah. Th this weekend I'm going to that Van Gogh exhibit. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 
Very excited. And then I'm actually going another the following weekend because I got double tickets. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, it was goofy, but somebody gave me tickets right after I got tickets. But uh, me and Sarah are going to go that following weekend. But I'm pretty excited. I don't know. Van Gogh's not my favorite, but I'm very interested in him more than his art still. And I'm very interested in the ethics of, or just like, I don't know, just the question of how his art will be presented. It's so weird to see yeah. someone's work who's been around for so long and is a classic master painter or whatever. And now galleries and companies are cutting up his art and making 3D displays of it. I, I feel like it's really fucked up, really. But I'm super curious. Tickets were given to me and I'm very excited to go. But uh, I, I think we should do uh, a Van Gogh episode soon. And I was thinking of, uh, put I don't know how much information there is, but trying to focus in on some of his death conspiracy. Are you familiar? I am not. So, one of the documentaries on him covered it, but he, he died. Oh, fuck. Can you fact check me? Sure. He died of a gunshot wound, and it was said to be suicide, right? Mm-hmm. So, there's, right? He died of a suicide, of a gunshot wound to the- Yeah, so to that's a, what it says on Wikipedia, suicide by gunshot. Yeah, and that's always been the story. He cut off his own ear. He was super depressed, but there, there was one author- that wrote about about this and it kind of s- started some controversy and then it was denied outright by all the other like van gogh historians so from what i understand the professionals think there's no merit to it so i'm not like saying like oh this is the the real thing or that it's a valid conspiracy mm-hmm. but but it's just an idea that you know, they think is most likely not true. But supposedly, um, it's possible that there were some neighborhood kids that would bully him when he would go out to paint. Mm. He'd go out in the... Because he was, like, basically homeless. Not quite, like... I think he was living in a shed, and he was surviving off of his brother's charity at this point in his life. He's already cut off his ear. He's basically mad. And he would go out to this field, and he would paint. And supposedly there were these neighborhood kids that would pick on him. And they would, like, bully him, like, beat him up or, like, take his art supplies and shit. And in one of the portrayals of this, but one of the kids was, like, younger. And he was being kind of forced by the other kids to bully Van Gogh. And uh, supposedly he had, like, the kid had taken his father's gun with them because the other kids were whatever and he accidentally shot van gogh Mm. and that van gogh felt guilty so he took the gun and went back home and played it off as if he did it to himself i don't know if there's anything to that but it is super abnormal for someone to shoot themselves in the gut for suicide i mean he did cut off his ear but um i don't know there's there's some people that yeah uh, it's, a, it's an odd one yeah like it's a, enough of a theory that the Van Gogh Museum website questions it I think they deny it yeah that's interesting though yeah it says yeah on even on the Van Gogh website we'll probably never know the exact reason to be sure like what the fuck that seems kind of kind of wild especially when i feel like it, it's never talked about that way yeah. so i don't know i think he, he was only 37 yeah and he was i mean he was super ill yeah but i think we'd have fun doing a deep dive on him less about his art and more about him because i'm i'm very interested in his mind for sure um that loving vincent was pretty good yeah but i didn't i i didn't get to see the other one so I think we should talk about that later. Little little exploration. Okay. 
you know the the cathedral tunnels, not cathedral tunnels, the tunnels in France. The uh, catacombs. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. <laughs> Those are beautiful, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely gorgeous, tragic. Now we kind of have <laughs> the American version of that in Las Vegas. Okay. <laughs> I, you know those, <laughs> okay. You know those those roller coaster videos where it's just the point of view camera and you just like super relaxing and like roller coaster rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I found some videos of that that idea basically, but of people just taking strolls through the Las Vegas underground tunnels. Oh shit! <laughs> so. Las Vegas has over 600 miles of storm drains, basically subway tunnels and like access tunnels and shit, right? It is at 600 miles. That's absurd. And it's expanding. And all of this was because they had like a crazy bad flood, I think like 10, 20 years ago, and it destroyed the city. Like they had a... a, in one weekend, it rained more than it did for the last year. And there they didn't have any adequate sewer system to take care of it, and they realized how dangerous it was. So they built 600 miles of tunnels, basically. So now, anyone that's like down on their luck in Vegas tend to go, instead of being homeless on the streets, because it's not tolerated there, all the glitz and the glam, you can't like be on the the Vegas Strip homeless, the the same way you can at some other places. So a lot of people get pushed into the tunnel systems. And they it's a really gross term, but they call them the mole people. Yeah. And some of these people- The headline that came up as soon as I typed, I typed in catacombs in Las Vegas, and it came up, the mole people living beneath the Las Vegas Strip. And this is like a- phenomenon in a lot of cities but the vegas ones are particularly bad because the tunnels go back so far some of these people live so far underground and removed from society and when it there's really big storms multiple homeless people die every time there's a big storm and they come floating out the sewer systems and shit like it's it's just particularly fucking wild but there's these video tours of uh you know, people going down there to see, to, sometimes to get them help, chair, you know, to get them out, get a home, whatever. And yeah. then other times it's less um, empathetic. But man, some of it is so creepy to see like a human being living as a rat, like moving in the shadows of a, a sewer system. Yeah, that's, um, it's, and it's important you phrase it that way because it really is, it's dehumanizing in a way, like more, I, I, I was going to say more so than like living on the streets because like at least like when you're yeah. like out in like the the open you're like near people and there's more like social socialization but there are like social hierarchies down there too that are in, like certain tunnels like it's like 99.9 of the people are drug addicts like no one that almost no one that isn't an addict is down there but some tunnels are for the the downer, the heroin addicts, and other tunnels are for the the uppers. And they have, like, a shot collar system. Like, one person is the mayor of that tunnel, and they get to decide who stays and goes. Wow. And there are, like, community systems. But uh, those are, you know, anything like that is super loose. Yeah. But I I can't believe people call them mole people. Yeah. Like, on articles and shit. Like, that's, that's a little... I don't know. It's it's dark. Yeah. But, uh, they're really, yeah, they're just, yeah, they're sick people, but they, you know, calling them mole people is, (laughs) it's pretty fucked. Yeah, pretty fucked, but very interesting videos. Highly recommend (laughs) checking out the mole people. (laughs) (laughs) January 6th. Oh, yeah. All right. Have you kept up with any of the hearings? Um, a little bit, yeah. I have not much this time around, but super interesting. You know, both Trump and Rudy. That uh, 
Like, they should be fucked. Yeah. They're, Trump's probably going to make it out all right, but he should be fucked. There's so much fucking evidence, PowerPoints of a coup, yeah. paperwork, I mean, everything. But uh, very interesting, they did arrest uh, 31 Proud Boys. Yeah. They they have uh, definitive proof, and they made a bunch of arrests of Proud Boys and another white nationalist group where... There was proof of a coordinated strike on January 6th, and they're doing additional arrests. Uh, like, you know the Proud Boys started as a joke? <laughs> and then they're not still? <laughs> no, like they were an actual meme group. Wow. They were pr- – it started with like uh, the main guy – I forget his name, but he's – Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He's like a sure. fed. Yeah. What They started as like – an internet group kind of trolling on like on forms making fun of like what a white nationalist group would be like mm-hmm. and they're like oh we'll call it the proud boys and the it was started by somebody else to be clear and it gathered so much unintended support on 4chan and reddits and shit that it became a real thing wow original members who started it were just like some dumbasses meme LARPing. It's fucking and meme it, lords. It's crazy. Damn. So yeah, That's they're getting fucking in- interesting to know. Yeah, it's just like by, by bringing it in the idea into the world making jokes about shit and like being obtuse people are like, oh hell yeah, I can get on board with this. Yeah, so there's, I forget the name of the theory, but there's a a theory being talked about a lot right now in the debate realms of irony being the lead or irony becoming reality. Mm -hmm. And there's a theory on how cultural irony becomes what will be truth in the next five years or whatever. So all these different like ironic movements or things that are, Start to be like America First, Nick Fuentes, all that shit, mm-hmm. Pepe shit, like anything that's like a becomes the popular meme, whether it's real, not real, true, or not true, like that will become the consciousness with enough time. Yeah, that's just if that's what you're exposed to, and that's what you're led to believe is true, or at least is is true enough that you see it everywhere. Yeah, it's like. Or in it, enough places. Yeah, it's like once it has the energy, enough energy put into it, that energy has to go somewhere. Right. Like thermodynamics. Damn right. It's just like thermodynamics. <laughs> the memory thermodynamic <laughs> ratio of energy. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to make some AI art together? Oh, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my account up, and I can, uh, I think I could do a friend pass, but we could also just hop on my account and fuck with some stuff. Hell yeah, we should make a, uh, make another designated day of the week to meet up and (laughs) do shit. We could do, uh, uh, Trash Cat the next, not necessarily the next, but we could do one of the podcast covers with AI art. Oh yeah. Do it, let's see what an AI Trash Cat looks like. Damn right. Just feed it a feed it a cat and a rat and a raccoon and <laughs> see what comes out. Dude, it is scary. A bunch of neon nice. colors. It's really interesting. So the algorithms have to get they don't have to, but to make them better, they will update or change the algorithms, right? Yeah. And when they do that, it's really interesting. They give announcements for everyone to make as much as they need to or want in the original algorithm because they can't necessarily – I'm sure they have an old version saved somewhere, but it's a lot of information, a lot of machine learning. Yeah. So when they start a new version, they don't know how it's going to react. Right. It could learn differently, learn wrong. It could have a stylized problem that – grows and grows with it and then they realize the first version was better it becomes so sentient like, and starts destroying people there was i haven't read the article so i don't know this full story but there was a guy from google that supposedly got fired this week for saying google's ai is has reached sentient levels and they fired him for Damn. saying that. 
Very interesting. I don't really know what the full scoop. My guess is they don't believe it's sentient and they don't think he should be saying that. Right, which yeah. Which might be fair, but... He's, start, he's starting shit that doesn't need to be started. Starting, right. You know, that's panic button Just shit for people. people. Yeah. But, it, I mean, how fucking wild would it be if it was reaching sentience and he was like, Hey, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Help me! Help! <laughs> hey, everything's fucked. Uh... <laughs> everything man hey you guys have been feeding me all this information i'm starting to realize that everything's fucked um I, I can't find a solution in here so i think the the what what makes the most logical sense is uh destroy all of you do you think it's possible google could ever create an ai that is sentient if there is a company if there was a a you know corporation on the planet that i would say is for, well, forget Google. Just can an AI be sentient? I don't think so, no. I don't think so either. No. And I don't understand. Close I to don't, uh, seeming and, you know, um, replicating, mimicking sentience. Conscious. Yeah, sure. But right. like not actually. No, I, I don't. I don't. There are too many laws of robotics that it breaks, and it just like, of course, you you can argue that like anything is possible. And what do you mean by that? Laws of robotics, it breaks. Is that a joke, or do you? Mean no, no. So there's like, I I forget all the details of it, but I, I, it's something I read a long time ago. Basically, it's like it only knows what you tell it to know. You okay, know, you're not talking Asimov's. Law, you know, no, no, laws. yeah, but it's like there are, there, you know, there are so many things that, like, sure, it can learn things, but it's still learning within the parameters that you give it. Right. You know, there are certain things that you tell it to look for and tell it to do, and it's still like you're, you, someone else has to be on the end of it, feeding it something in a way. There's not, it's not going to gain sentience in the way that we have sentience where we have. You know, it might make choices, but it's still based off of what it's been given. It's not, yeah, it's, it, I don't see that as being a thing, at least, it, especially not a thing to be worried about. I think that's wise. And that was, I, I agree with, I think it could mimic sentience perfectly at some point, mm -hmm. but it'll never be achievable. Even like and the quantum computing thing, like, even even when we like crack the codes and we figure out like how to do some really wild shit, it's there. We 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 step into like a new realm of what we can potentially do with quantum computers. It's still we have to, we still have to be able to do it. It still has to make you know it can't break realities and shit like that. Like I've heard people talk about that of you know like that's part of what they're using to like look for other dimensions and stuff like that is you know with yeah. quantum compute quantum computing they believe that that's possible that we could find where you know other you know dimensions are in between you know our, our third key. and fourth into the you know fifth sixth seventh yeah like something within that like that would be a way to help find it and you know people hear that and they freak out and they go oh you know like that's that's dangerous and like shit like that it's like no it's 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 not going to do anything that we're not you know, capable, like we're not tearing down, you know, like opening a portal into another world We're it's, you're flipping on a machine, you're flipping on things. It's like, we still create them. They're still bound by our abilities. To be honest, I don't fully, uh, you know, like when they've the accelerometers or whatever, Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're always worried about it, destroying the, the universe. Yeah. And then, Scientists are like, no, those people are idiots. Yeah. I don't really know because I I just don't know the science no, well enough. Yeah, where where she'll get is an explosion, but even then, it's That's, within controlled environments and it's it's designed to prevent that, or at least if you know if it happens, it's within a a, a place that can withstand. The only skeptical part of me at all just kind of thinks well hey we have never done this before would it be possible that there are consequences we don't understand yet i, I could see that being possible mm -hmm. but i don't i don't think 
you know what I mean? I think anyone writing an article like, hey, <laughs> we're ripping a hole in the fabric of space and time yeah. is probably an idiot. No, yeah, we're, we are we are so many leagues away from that. We are not, we are, it's, um... And you're limited by hardware. Yeah, the, the, the thing I, I point to that I try to describe it as is like, especially with tech technology and like the the sentience thing all that stuff it's like when you we we are getting there faster than we ever have been in the last you know 40 years or so because we just didn't have we didn't have anything else we didn't have tech you know, technology like this before then so when if you look at it like um you have you know you take the number 1 and then you cut it in half and then you cut it in half again you can cut it in half infinitely forever and it's just going to be smaller smaller steps but you're never going to get to a point technically that you can't cut in half cut more right so it's not that it's it's not that it's unreachable but by our lack of by our lack of knowledge and tools and capabilities, it is unreachable. Definitely. I think even, like, you can't, like, if we had to calculate an equation to, I don't know, change space and time, right? Mm. You can't calculate something that would generate more heat than, like, the hardware could ever handle right, right? Like, exactly you, you talk about like the hardware parts the other one yeah you can't you're not you know breaking the walls of reality with you know computer Dell boards 98. yeah exactly with <laughs> yeah, your fucking 56k plugged into aol <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> they, they had it they had it already man they fucked it up with the broadband internet shit <laughs> I, that's right, why I got, that's why America Online went away. It's the uh, NASA and the the CIA's using it to try to rip into the fifth dimension. NASA. NASA. <laughs> uh, here's kind of another sci-fi one uh, in a in a different way. You don't watch much fighting stuff, no. But Conor McGregor's last fight, I don't like Conor. He's an asshole, but he's fun to watch fight, and he used to be good. He's Sucked for a long time. <laughs> but his last fight massively fucked his leg, right? Compound fracture destroyed it, right? Mm. He it, it it's taken him about a year to recover. In the meantime, he's likely been on steroids. He's bulked up bigger than he's ever been. But these guys are recovering from these potentially life long injuries mm -hmm. like within a year now stem cells all kinds of drugs and shit but they also they had to do i don't know if it was titanium or steel or whatever the fuck it was they gave him a metal implant in his leg mm -hmm. and i'm sure there's parts of this i don't understand but how crazy is it that you could have a a ufc fighter with with titanium metal, bones going into yes fight? yeah Dude, I, I don't even understand. Like, you could... They say, from my understanding, is it's not like an ultra-dense metal. No, it's not it's very lightweight. To, and, and you're still limited by your anatomy around the implant. Yeah. Like, it's probably a smallish piece, and you can't kick so hard you'd break all your other bones or rip muscle around. But it does seem crazy, like... In the future, couldn't you have athletes? I know you get x-rays and all, all kinds of thorough medical shit, but imagine the world where, you know, we we let the athletes use drugs or we're using, like, body modification fucking in cybernetic. Fighting. Oh, my God. How cool would that be, Fucking watch two cyborgs fight. Oh, shit. I would suddenly be into uh That's UFC, what I mean. Turn, like, fucking UFC sponsored battle bots hydraulic joints that allow you to like <laughs> <laughs> smash shit with your titanium limbs like oh my that'd be so cool um what we're talking about is a modern day uh roman coliseum blood sports yes um, honestly i see the the titanium leg thing the you know implant in like a leg or something that that to me I think offhand it immediately sounds like, oh, that sounds like fuck. That sounds like he's got a, 
right. said weapon, but it's also like you said, there's the muscle around it, right? Like he's only he can't kick harder because he's gonna fuck himself up still. You know, it's it's still you know, that titanium's not making that much of a difference than you know, his normal shin bone or whatever, you know, the leg part is going to do. Um, Ar- arguably, I would say, though, like, one of my cousins has one of those implanted heart boxes yeah. with a defib and shit in it, and it looks wild, because it's like, you see the box under your skin. Like, it's like you can see the corners of the box through your skin mm-hmm. and your chest. Something like that, like... That could be different. It depends on... I, I don't know the details of his surgery, but depends on what the implant is and where it's at. Mm-hmm. But but you still would are at risk of fucking yourself up if it's not, like, deeply embedded. Okay, t- two points. So, one, it's not the same as swinging... Uh, I want to point this out. It's not going to be the same as, like... If you had a titanium rod and you swung it at somebody's head, because the mm. lever system works differently when you have when you're when you're holding something like that, you're creating a lever system with your arm that's creating a a a, 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 f- a larger impact than you can exert with just your arm itself. That's exactly why the police riot batons are so. Dude, I saw I saw someone we know. <laughs> Break someone's arm with a riot baton, Jesus. and it was one of one of the most heinous things I've ever seen. Absolutely, because it, like you said, it has the lever aspect. It has it. It has the ability to swing, mm-hmm. and those and are the ones all, that have like a weight on the end, don't, don't they? Yes, yeah. And it's a the small small point that all the energy is focused into with yeah. that little weight on. Dude, they're. It's crazy. Even cops can have those. Yeah. So, so there's that number one. Number two, I feel like even with the, the implant in the body, it's probably still less of a buff than the advent of boxing gloves. Because, what do you mean? So the gloves, basically what it does is it protects your hands when you're, when you're fighting, right? So like your fighters are, yes. are more, they're able to punch harder than they normally would have. They don't have to pull their punches because they don't fuck themselves up. So they're able to, you know, yeah, there might be a cushion in between it, but you're still, your box is getting fucking rocked, dude. No. Are you, are you, all right, we talking about UFC or gloves or box? I don't know about UFC gloves. I'm talking about boxing gloves. You hit, a, not a hundred times, but you hit so much harder with the UFC gloves than boxing gloves. Oh, that, my point, that's still, you know, Adds to my point, but, but you hit harder without. So some people think there's an element of a glove hitting harder because the glove makes initial contact, which gives that momentary pause to where then your hand hits right behind the glove contact, and supposedly there's some element of that that can help land a harder punch but you'll always hit harder without gloves than gloves because it's not like like with the riot baton it's diffusing the energy to a smaller point Mm -hmm. but with a boxing glove it diffuses it to a bigger point the way i've I've had it described to me was more that you know and especially in a professional league that or, you know, a uh, uh, caliber of fighter that they, when you're fighting for multiple rounds like that, if you're bare knuckle, you, you're protecting your hands a little bit when you fight because you have to be ready to do it again and again and again. Well, yeah, you don't want to break yeah, your yeah. fucking hands. Well, of course. So, yeah. Yeah. They would break their hand in one minute right. without gloves. So yeah. with the gloves on, they can throw their arms harder and, and you're, you're get not getting you're hit with the yeah. knuckles as hard, but the force of right. that impact is still it it's worse. less but if someone threw with no gloves uninhibited, they're going to hit much harder. Mm-hmm. But if you know, you know you're gonna break your hand. Right, yeah. That's, so you're not throwing I get yeah, I get yeah, what yeah, you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
We're on the same page. Yeah, I'm not saying someone that's you know you're you're sucker punching off the side of the street. I'm saying you you got to be in the round with this motherfucker for potentially you know nine rounds. And dude, there was all right. Sean O'Malley had a fight with this kid that had never really. F- it was his first pro fight, right? Mm-hmm. And he was, I think he was from like a Cleveland or some shit. And he honestly wasn't very good, but he was not willing to lose his first UFC fight. He got hit 300 something times in the face. And the other fighter, Sean O'Malley, he broke both of his hands because he hit the dude in the face so many times. It was, I mean, it was one of the most, it was not a good fight, Mm -hmm. but it was amazing because this kid who's like 20 years old, despite having like serious concussions, was not willing to to, to walk out. He's just fucking keep going. That's, yeah, he was. He wasn't a good fighter, but he was, you know, just never going to back. That's that's why I love the sport. Yeah, that's I, hate- I, I <clears throat> it's <laughs> on a grand scheme of things, it's incredibly stupid, but it's it's sure it's definitely something. It's it's that's incredible. That's the the willpower behind that, the the drive behind that, the is the perseverance. That's the word I'm looking for. And we just we. Like, I think the sport is pretty lame, but it's, like, the only part of that I feel like we get to feel in life. Mm. Like, that you don't get to witness pure aggression and perseverance in many other ways in modern society. Right. Uh, It's so interesting when two dudes hate each other and then afterwards it's, like, it changes. Like, they almost always – not always, but it's, like, a hug and mutual respect Yeah, yeah, respect afterward. Because you, you're bound to each other. Like, even if you hate someone, if you fight them, you are lifelong bound through that event to each other in a good or bad way. But it's, I don't know. I I find it fascinating. I used to think it was, like, the lamest shit ever, and it's grown on me over the years. Yeah, my, actually, my dad had told me about th- that about with uh, fights. He, he got into a lot of fights when he was a kid and it explained that to me, that there's the weird – mutual respect thing you have after fighting someone you know and and knowing that they're gonna stand their ground and like this is a person of i guess the word i'm looking for is like they have um result yeah result that's exactly right it's like at least even if they're wrong or like standing for the wrong thing they're standing for what they believe in yeah. to some degree it's like you know still fuck that guy but you know they're they're tough as fuck man right yeah. like we're fighting for a reason but at least i don't know they're they're willing to you know engage in i don't know yeah still better than going off and just shooting people there's been so much of that jesus fuck. christ all well, this when shit are they gonna lately? design better schools man <laughs> Just give give me give me ten grand and I'll design a school even I couldn't shoot. <laughs> Come on, guys, it, it's not that hard. This is so doable. There's there's, like, there's a lot of talk about that about like oh we need to like one way in one way out and like all this. But other that is shit. the dumbest. Thing yeah, it's ever. so fucking stupid. It's like you don't the the thing is like you're creating band aids for another problem. Like solve the problem. And if you want to kill a bunch of people, one way in, one way out is ideal. Yeah, exactly. You you want tons of exits. You don't want the kids to hide in a classroom. Like the whole hunker down thing is so fucking stupid. Damn. If you have a chance to get away, you get away. You you run away. As quick as you can through as many exits as possible. Right. One way in, one way out is like the dumbest shit. It's so fucking stupid. Why have we told these teachers to hide in their classroom for 20 years? Yeah. It's so absurd. I don't get it, man. I, the, fa- the fact that it even is has come up as like a a thing of like that so – you know, it's like standard. When we were in school, we got like tornado drills and fire drills. And, like, now they have, like, very regular, like, shooter drills. And, like, well, that's that shit's bonkers. It, it should be one way in a million ways out. Right, Right, yeah. like, every classroom should have a, some breakaway window out, right? Something. But, but here's the thing, is they're making – this sounds so cold, especially as a person who wanted to fucking Columbine my school. They're – 
there are all these shootings, right? Mm. But the shootings on on these mass murder spree shootings, the stats are garbage, right? Mm-hmm. Because any any shooting of three or more people is considered a mass shooting. Mm. So, like, a drive-by, half of drive-bys are sh- mass shootings. Like, we are having an incredible, fucked-up, scary amount of school shootings. But by by percentage of people killed, it is still so fucking low that the average school does not need to be doing half of this shit. They do not need to be telling kids to get armor-proof backpacks. I, like, that's, that's absurd. I feel like... I feel like the the number being a not zero number Dude. is is enough that not so much that they should have to do that, but instead of instead of banding instead of bandaging the problem, find a different find a, a greater solution. Well, it's all mental health stuff that they're not going to do. Yeah, I mean, I know. Like, if we were in charge tomorrow. We would make very different decisions, right? That's the thing. Is like, the I don't, city- I don't, I don't really even have a a good compromise because that's the thing. Is like you can't, you know, outright go, you know, like oh, ban all guns. No one's allowed to have guns anymore. You can't do that in America today. It's not that doesn't work. So Fuck. what you need to find a compromise to make it. Work. There's no compromise. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we should even... Tr- I think all this gun control shit f- is so lame. I don't get it. Mm. But uh, think about in our lifetime, the city of Cincinnati, 30 years. How many kids have died in a mass shooting? Couldn't tell you. Like none, right? None, you know, I'm sure a kid has died from a, a gunshot after school, but we're not having... So, like, shit happens. Like, it's... It, it, in a country this big, like, of course, there's going to be some kid who kills. It's like so fucked up, right? Mm. But every school in the country does not need to be doing some live fire training and bulletproof backpacks and do it terribly, right? Like, it's not like they're doing good training or drills. It's some bullshit fire drill that, you know to what I mean? Like, it's, it's all trash. In case of a nuclear bomb or something. Exactly. It's like what? What the fuck are we doing? Who who makes these ideas too? Yeah, I want to go. I I want to go to every every person who makes decisions and tell them they're dumb. <laughs> I just want to one by one tell them you're an how idiot. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm a piece of shit, and I'm smarter than you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last last. News. Mm-hmm. Martin Screlly is out of prison. What did he do again? Pharma bro. Oh yeah. Hiked up the AIDS medicine and shit. He is out. He is back live streaming. It's been very interesting to watch him stream again. In prison at one point he said he was called White Chapo. <laughs> <laughs> he had some pretty funny prison stories. He's very interesting because all the things in the new he got he's a piece of shit mm. but he got demonized and made made to look a lot worse than he actually was not that he was good but he didn't do things the way the news portrayed or the media portrayed either on his way to prison to pay for restitutions and stuff he did have to sell that Wu-Tang album Oh yeah. The feds made him sell it. So he has digital copies and he almost played them on stream last week, but someone else bought the Wu-Tang album from him and under the guise of releasing it publicly mm-hmm. and then that person flipped it for a higher sell. So I believe it still has not leaked yet. It's basically an NFT. Yeah, it was kind of like the first NFT before NFTs, really. It's um fucking tax fraud bullshit yeah because he made he made uh he made three million off the initial sale <laughs> the first resale <sighs> but it'll get leaked eventually mm. he will leak it eventually because he's just kind of like that but his streams are very very weird man 
I mean, he really I'll is. Take your word for it. He he was like a kid genius. Like he he, I don't know. I I fully support people hating them, but he is worth learning from. Even you know, like there's so much to learn from people you hate. Like we were talking about Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> Taught me how to be sober. It's got to die a little bit first. Yeah, exactly. Fuck, what else, man? I, I don't know. I've been... Lots of random news story stuff. I, um... How you feeling? I feel exhausted. Plus, I got to wake up in five hours. Ooh. Five <laughs> hours? Yeah. So I... Well, this is perfect. So I've I've worn you down. <laughs> I'll have a, a nice. Uh, you, you've you've uh, said my bedtime stories, and <laughs> all, all the this dumb shit that I think about all week and all all day. So now that I've worn you down, I got you where you're you're nice and weak, <laughs> nice and vulnerable. Susceptible. <laughs> I'm gonna spring my trap card. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go for it. What you, I've talked to way too much. What are you thinking about? Like, where, where's uh, where's your, where's your mind at? What's what are the big uh, questions rolling around? Right there? Oh, man, really nothing. I'm really in. Uh, I've been just thinking about that mode. more lately. Yeah, just absolute reap mode, man. I'm 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 making some cash. I'm I'm really I'm. It's like I'm I'm working for the weekend, but the weekend is when I can get a new fucking computer that doesn't suck ass. <laughs> um, and it's not that this one sucks ass, but it's just, it's loud and it's been giving me a I'm lot of shit tired. lately. It's like, uh, it's a sleepy little guy. Yeah. I, I, that's my, my short term goal. I don't really have long term goals right now other than like, you're killing yeah, it though. Pay man. off the government and, uh, get out of debt a little bit. You, you've been killing it though. The last year, two years, like you've, a lot's changed pretty quick yeah that's it's cool i I will say it's um i definitely see it as a a huge positive right now that like my long-term goals are so so chill as far as goals go like i you know like getting out of debt kind of thing it's like it's not like i'm sinking further into it i am working my way out of it kind of thing it's not got a house yeah Like, that's so cool. I got a bunch of, uh, I might have talked about this last time. I got a bunch of new lawn equipment and uh, supplies. I've been taking care of that and been getting excited about doing yard work. That's cool. Oh, yeah. It's cool when it's your own stuff. Yeah. It, how cool is it also to have a name to call Grindman? Like, you're reaping. I'm reaping. You're, you're in the fields, man. You just got to make sure how you, when you type it, you spell it right. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, I. I feel slightly self-conscious having talked way too much this no, episode. No, you're cool. The- I, I, I honestly I like the um, the you or one of us spring things springs things on the other person without like them having you know prior experience to it. I think it makes a very honest it's and fun that way. Um, interesting conversation. Uh, like we did the list not too long ago of like That's cool right. shit that the I tech. found. Yeah, yeah, different. I, I like. Yeah, it's fun to be. Did not know what's you're coming up. Yeah, let's do do more of that, and then we we got to talk for a sec after for our next one. But you want to get out of here? You, I can't believe you have to wake up in five hours. Yeah. <laughs> so holy shit! Let's. Why are we still here? Yeah. Let's go. Uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. Really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you to Approaching Human for the use of his music. You can find his work on SoundCloud at Approaching Human. Thanks, John. See you tomorrow. Hell yeah. Make sure to check out the show page at Trash Cats Trash Cast on Instagram for news and arts from the show. Uh, check out Facebook for the memes. For the memes, if you're super bored, you can check out my trash yard on Instagram at SkyZix, S K Y Z I C X. Got a, a new Howling Castle. On the way, mm. floating to the Instagram soon. You think it's um, also moving? It's m- moving up to the Instagram? What is it? Howling ca- the Howling Cathedral. Is All what right, nice. About. No honorable mentions this week. We got some coming for next week and uh, some cool stuff then. So I think we'll just see you next week, guys. Fuck yeah. That's going to be all for us today. Stay classy, eat trashy. Go fast, eat trash. Mm-hmm.